peeps, welcome to another video. Today it is the long awaited and much promised pleated and gathered skirt tutorial. I really hope all the directions are clear. I have included the equation for finding out your measurements in the description box down below. I have also put my uh, address in there because if you have any queries at all, please just send me a quick email or let me know in the comments. Anyway, let's get started. Okay, you're going to need your fabric and you want at least a metre to a metre and a half more than two times your waist measurement uh, to make this skirt work. You're going to need a zip. I'm using an invisible zip, but you can use any type of zip that you like. You'll need some thread. You'll need some bias binding. You'll need your scissors. You need your fabric marker of choice. Um, I'm going to use a friction pen. You're going to need a ruler, pins, and some medium weight interfacing for your waistband. Oh, you're also going to need some plain paper, a pen, and you're going to need a fraction calculator. This is a free one that I got from the App Store. You're going to, I need a fraction calculator because I'm working in inches. This um, math the math will also work in centimetres and will probably be much easier to calculate, but I like to make my life difficult. Sorry about the uh, camera shadow, we're being lit from above, so there's not a lot I can do about that. So you do actually have to do some maths for this skirt, but it is very easy maths, especially if you use the fraction calculator. So you want to start with your actual waist measurement. For Big Bird, it's 31 inches, and then you want to add your desired amount of ease I've chosen one and a half inches, which means that her waist uh, measurement for the skirt is going to be 32 and a half inches. You then want to take that 32 and a half inches and divide it by an odd number, and that's going to be the number of pleats. The reason you want an odd number is because you want a pleat right over the center front and you don't want the two pleats joining, which you would get if you had an even number. So 32 and a half divided by seven, actually equals four and nine fourteenths of an inch but basically that i'm going to round it to four and a half inches it's a little bit over four and a half um four and a half but this will work so once you have your pleat front you need to find out how big your pleat back is so your pleat front you divide by two and that will equal your pleat back so that's four and a half inches divided by two equals two and a quarter you then need to work out what your minimum fabric requirement is going to be. So you want to take your waist measurement, and that's the waist plus ease, 32 and a half, times that by two, because that will um, give you your pleat front and backs, and that's going to be 65 inches. So the amount of fabric I had, I did say um, at least a metre more than your um, waist doubled, <laughs> but... I work in meters for length in the UK and then everything else in inches. So the actual fabric length I have is 170 inches and you want to take off your seam allowance, which I'm using half an inch. So that's one inch in total because it's seam both sides. So that gives me the fabric length of 169 inches. You then want to work out how much gathering you're going to have to do. So you want to take your fabric length, which is the 169, minus the 65, which is the minimum fabric requirement, or your waist times two, and that will give me 104 inches left over. So for the gathering lengths, you want to um, take your pleat number, which was your odd number up here, so seven, and you want to add one to it, because that way you'll have even pleats, um, even gathers every side of the pleats. So it's 104, which is your gathering length, which is your fabric length minus your minimum fabric requirement. Divide that by eight, because we have seven pleats plus one. And that means that each gathered section is going to be 13 inches long. I've done a rough diagram for you here. So, and again, camera. <laughs> So this is the seam allowance of one of half an inch. Then we're going to have gathers, which is 13 inches. We're going to have the pleat back, which is two and a quarter inches. Pleat front, which is four and a half inches. Pleat back, which is two and a quarter inches. And then a gathering section of 13 inches and then repeat um, for the number of pleats that you've added. So for me, it would be seven. And then the other, other side, you'd add your seam allowance again. I am going to show you this all marked on the fabric. But, and this equation will be in the description box down below. It might seem 
um, daunting, but I promise you, once you've kind of seen how it goes together, it is a very easy thing to do. And if you have a fraction calculator, that makes your life even more easier. Or you could just work in centimetres. So you want to decide the length that you'd like your skirt. And obviously that will be di dictated by the actual width of fabric that you have available. I'm using a border print here, so it's 45 inches wide. But Nia would like her skirt to be 29 inches long. So I have marked a cutting line here, which is actually at 30 inches because I've not taken the selvage off of the... Uh, other end and uh, it, that will also account for the seam allowance. So I'm now going to cut that bit out. I'm then going to cut out two waistbands out of the corresponding um, fabric from the next, next layer up so that it kind of blends seamlessly with the skirt. Okay, I've just cut out my waistband and my waistband lining. Um, my waistband is going to be one and a half inches wide, so I have added half an inch of seam allowance to both sides. So this is a two and a half inch wide band. And then you need to remember to add your seam allowances to either end as well. So the waist measurement, including the ease, is 32 and a half inches. So this waistband is 33 and a half inches long. So I have half an inch what, um, seam allowance on either side and I've cut them into two separate parts because I prefer to sew my waistbands this way rather than folding it over. I'm now going to interface the waistband that's going to go on the outside and this is going to be my lining piece. Okay so at this stage you should have three rectangles of fabric, one super super long and wide one, one interfaced one and one uninterfaced one. Okay the next thing you want to do is find the centre of your fabric and mark it and we're going to start marking our pleat pattern from the center so that we're doing seven pleats so this is going to be pleat number four that we start work from and that way we can just evenly work our way either side of the center pleat and adjust things as we need to go the the room the bit where you've got the adjustment room is in the gathering section so they're 13 inches long they may they may slightly tweak as we go as we go through and mark everything off again i'll show you what i'm talking about okay so we have our pleat fronts which are four and a half inches wide and we're going to mark from the center point we're going to mark our four and a half inch wide pleat with that bit centered so two and a quarter inches either side of that center point okay i also like to um kind of make a note of what number i'm working on there so i've just turned that into a four so that is our very first pleat there then we're going to add in the back pleats, which are two and a quarter inches. So we're going to make another line two and a quarter inches along from the mark we've just made. And we need to do that on both sides. Okay, I'm going to try and zoom you in now so you can see a bit better. Okay, so there you can see I've made it into a number four. There's the edge of the first pleat, there's the edge of the second pleat, and then over here this is the back pleat, so that's two and a quarter inches there, and then over here the second back pleat, so two and a quarter inches there. The next mark we need to make is our 13 inches gathering point, so you match it up with the edge of the back first back pleat, and you just going off camera here but we just again make a make a mark and then on the other side you find the mark you made for your second back pleat and you mark 13 inches along from that so this is the center of our front pleat that's the edge of our front pleat that's the back pleat And then I've marked 13 inches along and that's going to be our gathering section. Um, it is also nice to mark the centre of your gathering section for when you come to actually evenly distribute these gathers behind the pleats. And I'm going to do that now. So 13, that's 12, um, 
six and a half inches will be the center of this one. Um, you may want to use a different color or a different method of marking just so that you don't get too confused with all your um, different little lines along here. But this, this will just make your life easier adding in the center of the gathering section as you come to, when you come to actually do the gathering. So once you've marked in your center plate front, your pleat backs either side and your gathers either side, you're then gonna just carry on and mark in the pleat backs, pleat fronts and gathers up to the seam allowance on both sides. So once you've done number one in the middle, if you've got seven pleats, that's number four, you're gonna have three either side that you need to mark in. So when you come to the very end, you want to mark your seam allowance on, so I'm using half an inch, which I've marked there. Then you want to mark your last pleat in, which I've done over here, and my gathering section's worked out to be 13 and a quarter long, which is fine, I can live with that margin of fudginess. Um, and I'm now just gonna, so I've marked on four pleats, I'm now gonna mark the other three the other side, and then I will start pleating. Okay, so now we are pleating our fabric. And this, from this pin, to this pin is our gather section. Uh, this is our back pleat. This is our front pleat. And this is our other back pleat. So we're basically make, making giant box pleats with big gaps in between them. And let me show you how I do that. Okay, so this is the center of our gathers. This is the first part of our first back pleat, that's the second part. And then here is the middle of our front pleat. So we're gonna take this piece, which is the beginning of our back pleat. We're gonna fold that and bring that to the middle of our front pleat, which means that the marking that we made, the marking that we made for our uh, other side of our back pleat is in this fold here pin and then do the same for the other side so this is the first part of our back pleat that's the second part of our back pleat this is the center of our front pleat so you want to take this one and fold that over so that it meets the other side of the pleat. Make sure everything's lying flat underneath. You want to be keeping top of the fabric so there we formed our pleat in there. Just gonna Tweak that a little bit. There we go, pin. And repeat. Middle of, middle of our gathers. Beginning of pleat, back pleat. That mark there is the center of our front pleat. and do this now without any weight pulling on it. Right, so this is the other side of our front pleat, that's the back pleat, so we want the back pleat to meet into the center of the front pleat. Think once you've done all pinned all your pleats in you should end up with something that looks a little bit like this mess of fabric what you're going to do now is you're going to go and press all of these pleats in carefully and thoroughly um, we will be taking the pins out as we go um, to get the gathered sections in but having the pleats pressed in will just make your life a little bit easier when you come to sew and sew everything up okay so i have pressed everything into place 
left the pins in. Uh, now I am going to finish my seam allowance on both of the sides. I'm going to do that with bias binding. Uh, you could pink this, you can overlock this, or you can bind it like I'm going to. Okay, so when I'm sewing on bias binding um, with my machine, I like to anchor the first part with a pin and leave the rest long. I have the roll sat in my lap. Um, I'm going to sew in this crease, matching up the edges the whole way along, and I'm going to do that for both se both seams, so both sides of this fabric. Okay, so once all the bias binding is sewn down, to so we've got the wrong side of the fabric and the right side of the binding, um, I'm then going to use my blind hem foot, um, which is the one that has this guide in the middle and this is going to help me um, get a straight line of stitching on the other side of the binding to make sure that it's all secured in place. Okay this is where things can get a little bit tricky because my machine has a huge throat space which is uh, 12 inches which means that I can get the bulk of my fabric underneath it and to use this technique with the blind hem foot to put the binding in you do need to be able to get all of your fabric under the throat space. Um, you will be able to do it, it will just probably be a bit of a squeeze. So what you want to do is you want to, this is now the right side of the fabric, we're going to roll your bias binding over so that it's sitting like that on the right side of the fabric. You're then going to run this under your sewing machine with this, the guide from the blind hem foot right up against the edge of the bias binding and that will help create a straight line of stitching. Back stitch at the top and then I push, push the fabric over with this finger underneath and then I roll the binding over with this finger and kind of do it a motion like that and that just smooths everything over. You can of course pin this, um, I, I find that that to me actually makes it a little bit more difficult so smooth with this finger and roll with that finger. And as you can see there the guide from the foot is right up against the edge of the binding which means that we're going to get a straight line of stitching the whole way down. Okay so now we're going to be doing some hand sewing. So you want a contrasting thread, a hand sewing needle and you're going to start from your seam allowance mark and you're going to do a running stitch all the way across to the centre of your pleat. And you want to do this at around about the seam allowance, so one, we're using half an inch seam allowance on this skirt. Just a few anchoring stitches to start. And again, this is when I need a GoPro. So literally just running stitch all the way across this length. When you get to the pleat you're going to need to take your pins out and you don't want to catch the front pleat, you just want to pleat you just want to um, catch the back portion not the front pleat. So once you've done your stitches in the whole of your gather section you are going to pin down the centre back of the pleat and then you're going to gather. These ones will be quite large gathered sections. So what you want, this is, this is your front pleat here, uh, front pleat and this is the gathered bit. So you want the edge of your front pleat to meet just inside of 
the seam allowance that you've marked and pin and then you want to evenly distribute all of these gathers behind that front pleat section. Okay, so you have your front pleat up to your seam allowance and then you have all of the gathered section pulled and pleated and, and pinned down behind there. So we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to run running stitches between this back pleat and the next back pleat and then we're going to gather those down. You'll need to remove your pins and this is where I've marked the halfway point in the gathered section and this is where that will come into play. It will just help you evenly distribute both sides of these gathers behind the pleats. And this is the front pleat here, so we don't want any running stitches in that. So I'm going to start at the back pleat. Uh, I'm going to start at the back of the, at the front of the gathered section. Repin that part of the pleat. Then this is the halfway point in the gathered section. I'm going to bring that to the edge of the front pleat. I'm going to do the rest of the sewing and then I will in evenly distribute the gathers. Okay. So these are your front box pleats and we've just met the two uh, pleat one and pleat two together at their edge. This is the middle of the gathered section. This is why I said to mark this. It just makes life a bit easier. Make sure that you're evenly distributing your gathers. So we've got all of this to ease in or to uh, gather down and pin in and then all of this. I have tried doing this with machine um, gathering stitches and I just couldn't get it to work, which is why I do it by hand. These don't need to be the most beautiful gathers that you've ever done because you're actually never going to see them. They just add fullness to the skirt. But you obviously want them to make them uh, lie as evenly and flatly as you possibly can and your front pleats must remain in a flat line. There must be no gathering in the front pleats. Okay. So there's that one. Now I'm gonna do the other side of the pleat. Now I've managed to get a bit of a hole in there, which is not what I want. So I'm gonna add another pin in. We're going to go and tack back and tack these together so that when we sew our um, gathers and everything down that the pleats actually do meet. But just try and be as accurate as you can at this point, just again to make your life a little bit easier. Okay, so... From the front it's all flat. As I said, we are going to tack that pleat together when we come to sew it, uh, before we come to sew it. So you're going to end up with something that looks very much like a porcupine and it will stab you, so be careful. But you're just going to repeat this process for the entirety of the skirt. Okay, so once you have done that, you should end up with something that very much resembles a porcupine and can be a little bit stabby, so be careful. On the front, all of your pleats should be lying nice and flatly. And what we're going to do now is we are going to go along and we're going to secure the pleats together. We're going to secure the pleats together at half an inch, which is the stitching line, um, with, a, with just some tacking, just so that, because when we sew, we're going to sew from the gathered side. So we want to make sure that our pleats are perfect and touching in that stitching line. Okay, so you, as you can see there, I have tacked the pleats together so that when we stitch over them, 
that is the position that they will be stitched at and they will be perfect and we can then take this tacking out when we've finished. Okay so now I am going to baste all of these down so that I can take the pins out so that I can then attach the waistband. I have tacked together my pleat fronts as you can see here they're tacked together so they should all lie really nice and flatly. You just again these don't need to be beautifully perfect because nobody's going to actually see them um because they're going to be on the inside of the dress but you want to try and keep um them as organized as possible i have my jewel feed on i'm going to use an awl to try and push the fabric through if it's misbehaving uh, just take this really slowly and again this is going to be sewn basted at half an inch okay so once you've basted the top you should end up with something that looks a little bit like this from the front and a lot like that from the back now that we have got the top layer all tacked down and um, I did get a couple of bits caught like that so I had to unpick them and redo them which is what happened there. But now that we've got the top layer all tacked down that's our pleats and then underneath there's all the gathering and then you can see on the back here you've got all your gathering so that's what your uh, waistband area should look like. Now this is obviously will lie slightly flatter than if you'd done straight gathers but it is still a little bit bulky but less bulky than as I say if you'd have done just gathering everywhere. So what we're going to do now is pin on the waistband. So you're going to want your interface waistband, make sure that the prints go in the right way and we're going to pin this to the skirt. Now you can do this skirt with um, panels of fabric so if you if it's not a border print if it's just a standard regular print you can do this skirt with with that as well what you need to do is cut yourself panels of um, the desired length you would like your skirt you then need to seam those panels together and then just treat it the same way that we've treated this the only difference being that you want to make sure that any of the seam lines where you've joined your panels together get caught behind the pleats so you may need to um, adjust the length of the gathered sections so that you can make sure that the pleats uh, the seams end up behind the pleats but that's very easy to do and you can kind of do that by eye as you go and as you can see the the you know the gathering sections do need to be as even as possible but you can you know fuss around with it a couple of inches either way and it still look good so let's get this waistband pinned on Okay, so we've got the waistband all pinned on and we're going to sew that and again we're going to sew from the side where the gathers are so that we can make sure that nothing gets tucked into um, the stitching line that we don't want to be there. Okay, so we've got the waistband sewn on. What we need to do now is we are going to press that so that all the seam allowance is pressed up towards the waistband and you're going to do that the whole way along you're then going to go in and you're going to take out the tacking stitches that kept your pleats together and there you can see your pleat is nice and together at the stitching line okay so next up we need to put in our invisible zipper and i don't have a perfect match this matches some this matches some but i think i'm going to go with this one okay so i've opened my zipper up I've got the teeth facing down and I pin it all the way so that the zipper tape is level with the top of the waistband and then I'm going to sew uh, that down. I'm going to do that with my invisible zipper foot to make my life slightly easier. This is the invisible zipper foot as you can see there. It has two grooves in it that the coils of the zip fall, fall into which help roll those out of the way so that you can get nice and close which will make your, zip, your zipper invisible. The other thing that I like to do when I'm using the invisible zipper foot is to move my needle over a couple of ticks into the direction that I'm sewing. So this will be on the first pass that I make and then I'll move it all the way back onto the when I do the other side of the zip. Okay, so once I've sewn the first side in I like to zip up the foot and then I am going to mark where the waistband comes with my friction pen. Okay so I have marked on where the waistband comes to on the 
zipper so this just means that when I'm pinning it to the other side that will give me a reference point of where I need to aim for and it gives me a slightly better chance of getting everything even and lined up. There you go, everything is matching up nicely at the waist seam there. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to sew on the waistband lining or the waistband facing. So before we actually attach the waistband facing, I have just pressed up the bottom edge of that by three eighths of an inch because our seam allowance is five eighths of an inch. So I want to, we're going to stitch in the ditch. So I want to make sure that this definitely gets caught. So I want this to be slightly longer than the uh, seam allowance that the rest of the skirt we're working with. So I'm now going to pin this in. Okay, so I have pinned the waistband facing with the pressed edge up at the bottom to the interfaced waistband right sides together. Now we're gonna sew along the top edge. This one we're actually gonna sew at 5 eighths of an inch because of the way that the zip, zip works. I didn't want to have to make my calculations for cutting this out any more difficult by adding those, you know, that extra eighth of an inch. So I just cut everything out um, for a one and a half inch waistband but it's going to be a one and three eighths inch, inch waistband once we've sewn this seam. So yeah you want to sew this seam at five eighths of an inch. Okay so you actually want to have completely stitched over your tape and have caught your tape in the stitching line like that. So once that's all done, we're now going to press this up so that all the seam allowance is pressed up and we're going to understitch the facing. So I have pressed all of the seam allowance up into the facing part. I'm now going to understitch uh, the facing, so stitch really close to that line there. That will just help keep the facing rolled in. I'm then going to trim the um, seam allowance and then we can get the uh, back seam sewn together. Okay, under stitching is done. I have trimmed the seam allowance. So now I am going to go and press this, <laughs> press this under. Okay, so we have a nicely under stitched waistband press that all over. So now what we need to do is finish these edges. Okay, so what you're gonna to wanna to do is roll your waistband over, and this is the line of stitching, this is the line of understitching. So you're gonna roll it over uh, so that the right sides are together and pin. And then what we're gonna do is get our regular zipper foot, regular zipper foot, and we are going to sew close to the uh, zipper teeth but not right up to the zipper teeth to enclose this section. We'll do that on the other side. We're going to trim away the bulk and then turn that around. Okay so we've sewn close to the zipper teeth and then I have taken out all of the bulk from there so we're going to turn this through and around. And we have our waistband nice and finished. So I'm gonna do the same on the other side. And there we have the finished zip. So now I need to sew up the back seam. Okay, so I've pinned the back seam together and I'm gonna keep my zipper foot on because I want to get in as close as I can to the bottom of the zip. So I'm going to um, move the needle position right the way over to the right and I am going to sew I'm not going to be able to get right up to that line of stitching but it's going to be like an eighth of an inch away and I'm going to overlap it by about a quarter of an inch and then just sew the the whole of the back seam closed so I've sewn the zip in as you can see I you can't you can't get right up to that stitching line but you can get pretty close so I have overlapped it by about a quarter of an inch and then I have just sewn the rest of the back seams closed. So I'm now going to press that open and I'm then going to pin the waistband down and stitch in the ditch. I've pinned the waistband down from the right side and just making sure that I catch the facing and this is why I made the 
hem or the pressed up the um, bottom side of the facing by three eighths of an inch instead of half an inch because I just wanted to allow myself that extra little bit of wiggle room. So now I'm going to stitch in the ditch all the way along which will um, finish the waistband. Okay, so stitching in the ditch is exactly what it sounds like. You are stitching in the little ditch that's created by the seam that's joined the skirt to, to the waistband. And um, you, when you're sewing, you want to kind of just sort of pull the two pieces of fabric, up, um, put some tautness on them. Again, don't pull, pull them too tight, but you want to aim to um, stitch right along that stitching line in there. Okay, so we've stitched in the ditch the whole way around and that has caught the waistband facing and finished the inside nice and neatly. You can of course sew this down by hand if you would like to. I just prefer this method as I think it's slightly more secure, especially given the amount of fabric that's in there and I think it looks really neat as well. Now all we need to do is hem it. Okay, so now we need to hem the dress and you could totally turn this up and sew it down because it is a finished edge, but I'm going to bind mine, which means that I need to cut this off. So I'm going to do that the whole way around the skirt. The only reason I've not done it until now is just so that it didn't fray. Okay, so now that that's all cut off, we're going to hem it and we're going to do that with bias binding. So when you hem a skirt, you want to leave yourself a really long tail when you start your bias binding so that you can uh, join them together uh, when you get around to the other side. So I have put my anchor pin in. I'm going to sew this the whole way around in the ditch, keeping the edge of the binding and the edge of the fabric level. And then when I get to this end, I'll show you what I do. Okay, this is the wrong side of the skirt and we've got the right side of the bias binding facing the wrong side and unfolded like that. Okay, once you've gotten the entire way around, you want to stop. So this is where I started and I backstitched and I've backstitched here and I've just, this is still on the reel. So you then want to marry, kind of keep everything flat, keep the skirt pieces flat. And kind of meet that up, pin it. This is very difficult to do from this angle. Okay, you want to pin it through there and then see if that then lies flat. And there's actually that's a little bit. There's a little bit too much binding, but only just in there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to sew this together. So I've sewn that together with a straight line. I am aware that when you uh, do bias binding, you're meant to do a 45 degree angle. And I agree with that when you are going to be using this for armholes and things like that, which do need to have movement in it. But this is a straight line on a piece of fabric that is never going to have any tension from movement on it. So flat line, much easier and uh, works just as well. So I'm now going to finish sewing this to the skirt. Okay so now we are going to, this is the right side of the skirt, we're going to roll the binding over to the the right side and top stitch. I have my blind stitch foot in again and you're just going to go the entire way around the bottom of the skirt using the same method that we did to attach the bias binding to the seams. So now that the binding is on, you want to give it a good press. You could totally leave it like this and have this as a detail on the bottom of your skirt. I, however, am going to press, once I've pressed it flat, I'm then going to turn it under uh, so that there is a little bit of the fabric showing. I'm gonna turn it under and I'm gonna do the same thing again with the blind hem foot. I am going to top stitch this side down from the wrong side so that um, the hem is finished. I think it's, it just gives this skirt an extra little kick because the the um, the amount of body that's in this binding when you've turned it over and turned it over and, and sewn it this way, it just gives it a lovely kick. So I'm going to go press and then sew. It's all pressed flat and then I have just turned it under so that there's a little bit of the fabric showing. I'm now going to do the same thing with the blind stitch foot. I'm going to run that along there and hem that the entire way around. The hem is finished and 
that's what it looks like from the right side. I'm just going to give it one final press and then I need to get my model to twirl. So there you go, you have your very own pleated and gathered skirt. Uh, this is something that I have made up. I have no idea if it's a, the correct way of doing this. It is a very easy and I think flattering rectangle based skirt to make. If you do decide to make one of your own, please include the hashtag Sean made me do it. If you do put it up on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter, cause I would love to see what you've created. And as I said, if you have any questions please don't hesitate to ask me either in the comments or send me an email. I really hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet, please subscribe and I'll see you again very soon. Bye!